gonna walk you through the dust extraction system real quick. Everything ends at that porthole over there. It locks into place and it pulls it against the wall. I need another hand. That's okay, I don't, I can hold it like that. As I start screwing, it's gonna turn that piece of wood. There, it clicked. That's it. It's tight. We take these vacuum hoses, two vacuum hoses, because double is always better. Pop that in here. There'll be another one kind of BAM! And that's where the vacuum exhaust hoses go to. So we have the two vacuums. They're 6.5 horsepower, but after all the hoses, I've got about like 110 CFM. I know because I measured with a wind speed meter. I'll show it to you. It's pretty cool. It's only 15 bucks. The two vacuums lead to two dust collectors. I've only got one right here, but I'm about to go get the other one from Parlay. So from that point, the hoses come out and you can attach it to your tools and you can hold it. I mean, whatever you want to do. Cool thing is I have everything on a remote. So you don't have to go and fumble for the switches. The even cooler thing is I've got this 1500 CFM duct fan that's constantly sucking out. It's loud. What it does is it creates this constant draft in this direction. That way it'll suck all the air, just, you know, a constant flow from under the door, in the corners up there, definitely a hole up there. And that'll give the dust no fighting chance to get to the rest of the boat because man and Parlay, they had it bad, man. They had dust everywhere a thick layer of dust inside drawers under papers under bowls reach these corner pieces so I have this finger sander that hopefully I can use to get into this area. I want to be able to glass all here to reinforce this and then up this wall and then attach it boom up there. I'm going to show you the injection port where they vacuum seal and inject the resin. It's empty. Down there it's full. But over here, it's completely empty. Look at that. That's the tubing that holds the space open for the resin to be injected. Nothing. Now, I have to grind out that spiral tubing. Otherwise, my resin's not gonna stick to anything. Well, it'll stick to that, but that's not sticking to anything. The middle part is where we're grinding all the way down to the wood and then we're going to taper up outwards. You can't have an abrupt dip. You need to be tapered probably half a meter out, like a foot and a half. 
so that we can slowly build up the glass. Each sheet will grow by like an inch or two. I think that's what Colin says. So I guess that's how we're doing it. Looks like our duct system is working pretty well. That's all dust that's just leaking out of the edges. Yeah. It better be bomb proof. Yeah. This is our uh, exhaust vent. This is how much crap would have been up in the uh, room. So constant exhaust coming out, but it's still a nightmare in there. Nightmare. This little boat, oh, this little boat has caused me so much grief. It's like a problem child that you just love but gives you so many issues. This is his older cousin, also causing a bunch of grief. <laughs> There's something oddly cozy about sleeping in between two Lagoon 450s. This is the boat that I've been looking at for the past year and a half, literally every day I'd go into Yacht World or YouTube and search for videos of Lagoon 450s. So it's just so surreal actually sleeping in between two of them. It's also a little weird sleeping in a car. The back seat folds down, but it slopes downwards. I'm kind of constantly going this way. It's fine because I have an AC and that AC makes life so nice in here. Almost too cold. Found a ton of delamination, a ton, man. This is in the aft port cabin. Check that out. She's completely separated. Not sure how deep it goes, but you can see right in the crack. None of that is connected. Actually, that doesn't look like delamination. It just looks like it was never bonded in the first place. All right, we're continuing day two. Via dos. I'm already sweating puddles at the bottom of my feet. We finally have a little bit of good news. Yes, I'm checking these engine rooms and I don't see any cracking. I don't see any delamination, any signs of cracking in the paint, in the glass. Looks good. One last place I have to check is behind all this insulation. I've already cut away all the wires. We well, just need to peek behind here and take a quick look. See, look, I don't see any problems. Peel it back a little bit more. No crack. Ah, oh, finger is stuck. Come on, baby. Be a good boss. No delamination, por favor. Come on. Nothing. I think we're home free. The last Colin. Can't do anything without asking him. Where is he? Colin, 
I don't think I have any delamination back there. Yeah, you probably don't. Can I just not do that? It's up to you. What would you do? I'd put a couple layers on it as reinforcement. Really? We're finding more and more delamination in just random spots. This isn't even from the the whatever damage or the design flaw. This is just bad workmanship. Look, all this resin in here is just dry. We didn't even see it until he took out a small crack up there. We're gonna see how far down we need to go. This one, they went a bit too deep into the wood in that corner. The glass, the epoxy is gonna be stronger than um, the wood there. It's okay. That's not bad at all. Really? So this is good. And then your ply will run straight and you'll be able to glide, glue ply to ply. Oh, I see. And then your, your glass will taper into this. It's really concentrated here. You can see um, just the lines of the glass. So you want those lines spread out. It's not bad though. I'd say just taper this out just a little bit more. There we go, ventilation system, vacuum <laughs> system, dust collection system. <laughs> That's the way to do it. It's not tapered, huh? That's got nothing going on. Alright, so we need to taper it. Yeah. What about this side? He took the beam all the way to the middle where there was no cracks. Oh mother. So then now we just have a tiny little taper on the right. That's why I had to let him go. That's f***ed up. Get a taper into that. You're gonna be putting, you're gonna be just filling all of this with glass. Okay. Um. I remember you in there for like hours. Right there. Yeah. Don't touch anything. Okay. It would be done today. No breaks? Yeah, just a little bit here, just cause that'll put air bubbles in your glass. Okay. In fear of it. All of our work, grinding glass and everything, was extremely experimental. Uh -huh. So we spent hours talking. I just sat there sometimes for fucking hours just looking at it. Figuring yeah. out what the best order to do things was. Alright guys, take care. Thank you. It's amazing to have some pros help you. Seriously, I'd be completely lost. You heard him. He had to experiment. I mean, half the time that he was spending figuring everything out was just sitting there designing, strategizing, which Luckily we don't have to do because we could just ask him and he'll just tell us do this first, do more of that, fix that over there. All right, back to work. Keep the bottom part on so I can give you a tour of everything we did so far. Did you see how much water came out of there? It's all the sweat from your arms that just drips into your gloves and collects by your fingertips. Ah, man, it feels so good to be out of that. You also feel so good in it because you know you're not breathing in all that resin and fiberglass dust. All right, grinding complete. Let's take a look. I already got it on my arm. Oh, no, no, that's gonna itch so bad. I'm trying not to touch anything. All right, that beam right there. Tapered in that corner up there. We're gonna glass that entire beam in. We're gonna have play that comes all the way down to the bottom. It's gonna be tapped into the hole on both sides. Let's go look at the aft cabin. Shouldn't have taken my suit off. Ground down, prepped the wood. We're gonna go over that foam hole. Goes all the way down in there. Oh, that's disgusting.
The dust abatement system actually worked really well. The whole negative air pressure, it was amazing, except for we were walking in and out through the door. So everything that was on your feet totally gets tracked out. But the good thing is, like we barely have any dust on the tables and up on the ledges. Parlay had dust everywhere. Literally all of this was covered in dust. I learned from them. You guys learn from me one step at a time. We're gonna help each other. We're gonna fix these bulkheads. A nice taper right here where the crack was and it goes out slowly, tapers out slowly. Plywood on both sides. It's gonna be super duper strong. You can see how this original middle bulkhead is not actually even touching the hull. Look, there's a gap behind it. If we look from the other side, you can probably see light coming through. See, there should be some cabosil or some kind of mud or some glue or something in there, right? All right, here's the starboard aft cabin. It's a little bit different on this side because we have the sun pad sitting here. Oh, so much dust. I ground a bunch in here. Uh, just to reinforce this beam, fiberglass is gonna come from the bottom all the way up because Parlay's boat cracked actually up here. Don't touch me. Oh my gosh. Every little bit that gets on you, itch all night, itch. Okay, so here's the section that's under the salon sliding doors. A lot of people with 450s know that the doors just don't close right. It's not settling. It's not like a house where the foundation settles. It's not supposed to do that. What happens is these pieces, they lift off. The pieces over there in the middle, they lift off. The center of your bridge deck basically drops down and then once it dips down, then of course your salon door doesn't close, right? But the reason why that sliding door drops down so quickly, it's actually this piece underneath. This is completely aligned the way it was supposed to be from the factory. None of that bridge deck is actually sitting on any of these supports. They had squirted glue under there, but the deck never touched the glue, so nothing bonded to it. It's crazy, no wonder this part sank. This is in the garbage port. What I did was I just cut out that back wall so we could hop in there. There we go, that's the port side, midship, semi-bulkhead. Jamie had told me how bad it was. I remember sitting at the bar and he's like, mate, that's the worst thing I've ever done in my life. And I was like, no, dude, it can't be that bad. He's like, I'm telling you, mate, it's horrible. I can't do an Australian accent, so anyways, that's Jamie. But after you do this, you realize it's just not worth it. Don't do this. This is horrible. Pay somebody money, regardless if you have it or not, and get it done for you so you can just pick it up. My wife was saying that it should totally be on dirty job and I completely agree. I would rather climb into a sewer and clean <laughs> So I've been reading tips and tricks on how to get fiberglass out of your skin. Number one, loofah, you gotta exfoliate. And number two, something about drenching yourself in vinegar. I think you shower first and then vinegar or you vinegar and then shower, cold shower and then hot shower. Either way, it doesn't work. I tried everything, oh shoot. We're gonna go take the longest shower ever. And uh, guys, I'll see you next time.